Southeast Asia, a part of the world that is situated between two large bodies of water, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. Within this region lies an area bursting with life and with such biodiversity it has been given a name of its own. The Coral Triangle, ranging from Bali in the west to the Solomon Islands in the east and to the north of the Philippines. The Coral Triangle is inhabited by more than 75% of all marine species on Earth. The north of this extreme rich and diverse region, the Philippine Sea, is where the Indonesian true flow originates. While running south towards the Indian Ocean, the water of the Indonesian true flow carries the eggs and larvae of all kinds of species that occur in the Pacific. The flow runs more or less undisturbed until it reaches a huge chain of islands that comprise Indonesia. Around 18% of all the true flow's water finds its way through the Lombok Strait, the channel that separates Bali from Lombok. The rest of the water is diverted and has to find a way through other channels, mainly around Timor. In addition to its place within the Coral Triangle and the Indonesian true flow running along its coastline, Bali has significant upwelling zones and the influence of the Indian Ocean to thank for its spectacular underwater scenery. So let's have a look at what can be found below the surface. A miniature feeding frenzy of little fish feasting on what the current is bringing in. Eggs, larvae, gametes and all the other non-swimming organisms that are carried by the ocean currents is generally termed plankton. Plankton is the base of the food chain, so where there is plenty, all other life blooms. Plankton attracts plankton feeders. Devil rays, like mobulas and manta rays, have huge mouths and a cephalic fin on both sides of their head to funnel plankton-rich water through their gills, where the food is filtered out before the water is discharged. Garden eels, strange creatures that live in burrows, rise up from the seafloor to feed. While facing the current, they pick out whatever the flow brings them. have specialized arms, claws or other structures that they use to grab food particles that are floating by. Not all that is caught is food though, and some stuff is put right back out. Sessile animals, meaning all animals that are attached in some way or another to the substrate, rely on the current to provide them with nourishment.
Anemones use their tentacles to catch plankton which is then transported to the mouth, which is situated in the center of the tentacle crown. Marine worms are much more colourful and versatile than their land-based namesakes. Christmas tree worms and feather duster worms are cryptid radials, feather-like gills that are also used to capture food. have polyps that fish out particles from the water passing by. When the current slows down, plankton and detritus will sink to the bottom of the ocean. In coastal areas, this is the territory of the so-called sand sifters. A pair of signal goobies, a rare tree to see in Bali, feeds by scooping up mouthfuls of sediment that is filtered through their gills. The sand is ejected, while what's edible is taken in. Other animals have more explicit adaptations to collect food from the seafloor. A Meliba sea slug uses her big hood to scrape microscopically tiny shrimp off the top layer of the bottom of the ocean. Sea cucumbers have food gathering tentacles encircling their mouths. They work non-stop in order to ingest enough nutrients from the sediment they swallow. Goatfish use their barbels to stir up the sand to pick out all digestible bits like small invertebrates. Not all animals have such specific adaptations to find food in the sediment. These fish are obliged to use a more opportunistic approach to feeding, by following specialists and contenting themselves with their leftovers. Mangrove forests are comprised of various types of trees and shrubs that grow in saline coastal habitats. Since mangrove trees grow in intertidal zones, they must tolerate broad ranges of salinity, temperature and moisture. To survive in these extreme conditions, they've had to adapt. A clear example of their extensive adaptation is the development of pneumatophores, or aerial roots. They grow upwards from the underground root system and help the tree to survive in anaerobic conditions. Mangrove forests are a habitat for quite a number of species. Semi-terrestrial crabs appear to find it an excellent home. At low tide, male fiddler crabs spend their time waving their giant claw to impress a female.
Mudskippers are also frequent inhabitants of mangrove forests. These fish can breathe through their skin while out of the water, a trick that is called cutaneous air breathing. They also have enlarged gill chambers where they retain a bubble of air, just in case. When the incoming water of the Indonesian true flow hits the mangrove forests that line the coast of the Indonesian islands, the water slows down. Eggs and larvae carried this far develop into juveniles, that will have a bigger chance of survival since they find refuge between the mangrove roots. Smaller fish species have learned to profit from the underwater roots as well. The biodiversity of the Balinese waters is incredible. The true flow that brings warm water from the Pacific mixes with cold, deep, nutrient-rich water that is pushed up by a phenomenon sometimes called the Indonesian Mixmaster. A sea of tropical water, a spoonful of nutrients and a splash of equatorial sunshine and you have the ideal recipe for a plankton bloom, forerunner of all other life. Because Bali also feels the influence of the Indian Ocean, it is surrounded by some of the richest waters on Earth. There are not many places where you can look at an underwater scenery and notice a dozen or so different species in just one glance. Sponges, simplest of the multicellular animals, come in all shapes, colors and sizes. Sponges are covered with pores on the side of their body. Water is pumped through these pores, or ostia, carrying nutrients, oxygen and tiny bits of food. These are filtered out before the water is expelled through the main chimney, this time carrying waste and carbon dioxide. are typically formed by a colony of genetically identical polyps. Around 600 different species can be found in the waters of the coral triangle alone. Cephalopods, like cuttlefish, squid and octopuses, are wonderful creatures. Most of them possess chromatophores, color pigments which they use to camouflage themselves or to communicate. female cuttlefish have just mated and are now carefully depositing their fertilized eggs, securing them deep between the branches of this coral head. Within six weeks or so the eggs will hatch and miniature cuttlefish will swim out to face the world. Octopuses, like this wonderpus and white fee octopus, are active hunters. They use their long arms to enter burrows to find some unsuspecting prey.
marine flatworms of a delicate elegance. Watching them slide by, moving like a magic carpet, is mesmerizing. The edge of their front mantle is folded into two pseudotentacles, thus distinguishing the head from the tail. Flatworms, which are worms, ought not to be mistaken with nudibranchs, which belong to the film of the mollusks. Nudibranchs make up another extremely diverse group of marine life. The variety and colors they display is beyond imagination. Many species that are found here have not yet been described scientifically. Some nudibranchs carry little hitchhikers. Shrimp and crabs belong to the group of the decapods, which means ten-legged. Often the first pair of legs has developed into large claws. The four remaining pairs are used to walk or swim around. Or just to hold one's ground. Even so, there are times when eight legs seem hardly enough to stay put when the Indonesian true flow is rushing by. A lot of fish, especially the ones that swim out in the open, form schools for many reasons. They find safety in numbers, to name just one. Bumpet parrotfish forage together. When one of them finds a rich grazing spot, they all will stop to feed. Spadefish, also known as batfish, seem to just relax and enjoy each other's company. While these reticulated dascalus have a more animated way of swimming. Frogfish are another curiosity of the sea. These fish are often referred to as a stomach with fins. They are ferocious ambush predators. By opening their mouth extremely fast, a powerful suction is created which draws into the frogfish's mouth any prey within reach. This technique is considered the fastest feeding mechanism known in the world of fishes.
Thanks to their large expandable mouth, frogfish are able to swallow prey twice their own size. Different kinds of scorpion fishes use the same gape and suck technique. A white tip reef shark patrols the Balinese reefs. She's getting ready for her nightly hunt. The Indonesian True Flow, Highway of Biodiversity. With all the plankton that it carries, the true flow provides an excellent source of food and a rich source of life. Once it has passed through the Indonesian islands, the true flow runs into the Indian Ocean. Here, variety of life decreases. That does not mean that life in these waters can't be spectacular though. The wild, untamable Indian Ocean is where the big stuff roams.